Now we know all these things happen. Yeah. This is not in any none of what I am saying is, by the way, well, it'd be contentious when you bring it all together as this is how it happens, but each part of it is not contentious. Yeah. We know. And because they looked at people who've got angina and blockages in their arteries in their heart and they scan them every year just to see what progress is happening and what they found is you don't get a gradual thickening of the clot or the plaque what happens is one year it's this size and next year it's this size so it jumps in size and as they've said this can only be caused what has happening is a new blood clots are formed on that area and it's added itself to the underlying plaque that's how plaques grow this that's not contentious and the final thing that kills you is a blood clot on top of an already existing plant because of that areas are a bit narrower the anything is a bit more you know, has more being damaged and the blood flow at that point is turbulent it's so getting worse this and becomes, worse over time and this becomes, and, this becomes you know, it yeah. becomes a focus doesn't it yeah so this becomes a focus for blood clotting at that point now that's not contentious the fact that it's a blood clot in the end that clots on top of a previous existing plaque and block, fully blocks an artery and causes mm -hmm. a heart attack or a stroke, that's not contentious. So none of that is contentious. Mainstream medicine will not, will not have any problem if you say these things to them. Mm -hmm. Where they have a problem is you say, that's also how it starts. At that point, they go, no. It starts because low density lipoprotein is absorbed through the endothelium, which cannot happen, mm -hmm. yeah. into the artery ball behind, which starts the plaque in the first place. The thinking started because basically they found um, um, a thing called they found cholesterol in plaques in quite high concentration. They didn't know there was such a thing as an LDL at that time. But then mm -hmm. they said, well, where can this have come from? Well, the only place it could have come from is the bloodstream. And that was about as scientific as it got. And it is mm -hmm. true that you can find LD. Well, actually, the question is, is it true you can find an LDL particle in a blood clot? Because the, the, the um, another issue that, again, 99.9% .9 of doctors are blissfully unaware of is that there is step back. LDL is a low-density lipoprotein, right? It is. It carries within it cholesterol and and fats. The cholesterol and the fats are linked together, and when you link a cholesterol and a fat, you get a thing called a cholesterol. So cholesterol, LDL carries cholesterol esters around in the bloodstream. Now LDLs are not made anywhere, but they are what the 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 thing that turns into an LDL is made in the liver. It's called a very low density lipoprotein, VLDL. You may have heard of that called a triglyceride, which is insane because it's not a triglyceride. It's a bit like calling a car a human being because cars contain human beings. LDL is not cholesterol. It is a vehicle which transports cholesterol and fats around the bloodstream because cholesterol and fat are not soluble in blood. So they have to be put into a, 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 a water soluble sphere called a lipoprotein. Now the liver makes VLDLs, it synthesizes them and it sends them out into the bloodstream. And as they travel around the body, they lose the fat and they become higher and higher in concentration of cholesterol. So they have, so say it's 50-50 fat cholesterol, by the time they become an LDL, it's 80-20. Uh, so it, 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 nothing is new under the world. Anyway, so an, LD, <laughs> an LDL is, if an LDL was the size of a human being, a cell would be about the size of a major sports stadium, just to give you some example of the scale, about Wembley or something on the Super Bowl or wherever it is. Mm -hmm. And um, so they carry around, and in fact, they can't directly get into cells because, because cells don't let things in unless they want them in. So the cell produces a receptor for LDL that sticks, it doesn't actually stick mm -hmm. out of the cell wall. Anyway, it's in the cell wall, the LDL comes along, locks onto it, and the whole thing gets dragged into the cell. And that is how LDL gets into a cell. So, th so the receptor is required, all right? So when you're saying to someone, um, well, okay then, so how does LDL get through the endothelial cell from the bloodstream to the artery wall? Because the cell would have to absorb it, take it into the cell, travel it across the cell, we'd be like walking all the way across Wembley Stadium, turning itself inside out the other side and popping the LDL out into the artery wall. Mm -hmm. Now that now there is a system that allows 
molecules to be transported across cells, which is incredibly clever. I, I always find it like uh, this is all amazingly clever. It's called trans transcytosis. The transcytosis doesn't work for LDL. Um, so the only way you could get it would be between the um, endothelial cells. And you say, well, maybe it slips through the gap. And you go, well, I've, I've got news for you because when cells are next to each other, they link very tightly together. And then they have about 5,000 protein strands stuck. And that it's a bit like saying you could get between two terraced houses. Mm. No, you can't. Although they are two separate houses, they are actually linked together by bricks all the way through. Yeah, so it's not and in possible. Fact, so, so that we call tight junctions. 